which is uh, 400 volts, it's uh, marked orange. So it means where where the orange cable. What? <laughs> <laughs> I need the tutorial how to assemble it, right? Welcome back to Ring Freaks. So in the meanwhile, boys and girls installed a full roll cage in the car, also painted it and gave some design so we see how it will look like in the track. And now it's my turn to get this car back to life. So I need to put the battery back and put some wires back in and maybe when we will start to drive this car and to see how it goes. So the first job which I have to do today is to install the rear brake lines. So it's not the lines between the caliper and the line, but simply the lines which goes from ABS block to the back of the car. They're here behind me. And uh, I want just to go through a little bit of the brake system in the Tesla. While the car is, has the autopilot and many people are freaking out how it can take control of the car and you cannot do anything. And I will prove you that uh, most of the people simply don't understand the mechanics of the Tesla that the especially the brake system is so basic in this car it's like in the golf mark 3 or something from 90s or 2000 year so i will just show you so here you simply have the electric booster uh, internal combustion cars have the vacuum booster but it doesn't matter and then you have the mechanical hydraulic cylinder it has two lines so it's uh, for front and back and these lines goes to abs block which is under there and from the ABS block, basically, you have the four lines. Uh, you can't really see here, but from the ABS block, you have four lines, which goes to each wheel of the car. And the thing is, now the car is without the battery, the main battery, 12 volt battery is also disconnected, and we will add the brake fluid, and we will bleed the brakes, and they will be fully working. So this we will show you. So the main lines to the back are already in the car. So you can see them here. It's a nice little mounts. There are, there are pieces of the roll cage, so I, I just isolated them that they wouldn't get wet. And what I found really cool in the Tesla, so you, I can show you, you can see this little, little plastic plate which holds the connection of the tubes. And from the bottom it has the six edge uh, hole. So the bottom, uh, the bottom pipe simply slides in that hole there is also the plastic fixator to hold it and then you can simply screw the top line in and you don't need to hold the bottom the bottom nut with the wrench while torquing the top one so it's really nice nice feature i think it makes the assembly a bit faster and safer because most of the time in the cars i find the metal brake line to the rubber brake line the connections are usually like this in in here so this little plastic piece makes the life easier and it's done so let's add some brake fluid and then let's try to bleed the system and prove that the brakes are working without any power in the Tesla as well, like in any car actually it works. Of course it won't be brake boosted, but it will work. So I have filled the brake reservoir with brake fluid and it's time to bleed the brakes. So I also forgot to put the brake pedals inside, so you can see. <laughs> now it's time to still put the brake pedals in the car so there will be some brakes. So simply never forget to install the brake pedal before you drive. Let's try again to bleed the brakes. Okay, just keep pumping. Tell me when to open. Holding. Pump. So you can see the brake fluid is already going. It means the brake system is working even without any battery or, or any power at all. Pump. So we have bleeded the brake system now. Uh, it's of course a bit temporarily for our testing of the car because we will still be changing the front calipers to bigger ones. And the thing what I wanted to say in the beginning with the Tesla brake system that it's really really simple brake system as in most of the cars. And it's mostly manual system. So what you see 
It has two contours, so one is for the front brake system and one is for the rear brake system. So if the one of the axles loses some brake pressure or something, the other axle will still be working and it will still have some brake fluid to brake. And now the Tesla has no high voltage battery, the 12 volt battery is also disconnected. And now the wheels are basically spinning freely. You can see, I, I can spin it with the wheel, the half shafts are spinning and everything. And now when the Tommy presses the brake, I cannot turn it anymore. It means if you lose the power, if you lose one of the axle brake, brake pressure, you can always stop the Tesla while using the brake pedal. Even the autopilot is on or anything. The brake pedal is completely manual thing and it's not operated by any systems apart your leg and hydraulic pressure. Now as we have some brakes in the car, let's get some power. And this is the heavy part of the build. Not because it's difficult, because it's heavy. It's about half of the ton, it's 500 kilos, which we need to get from that corner to here and put it there. Let's do that. So without right tools it's a little bit hard to get the battery back in because as I mentioned before the battery has the car's lifting points so we lift on the side skirts with some planks. Now when the battery is in the car we cannot lift on the side skirts not to bend them because the, the car gets so much heavier so you can see how, <laughs> how difficult it is when we are using the lifter, the rolling stand for the battery and also some hydraulic jacks to make this, <laughs> to make this happen but it's nearly in. So with the help of whole team, uh, we have put the battery back in. It's a, a, a little bit harder task than to remove it because you really need to align it perfectly to fit all the bolts in. Uh, but it's it's not a real problem. I think the the main thing would help like the the good rolling cart specially made for the battery, which could also lift. But it's okay with simple tools as well. So now what's I will check uh, the torque the torque um, strands for all the bolts and let's torque the battery in and. Yeah, then all the hoses, wires, and then we can start with the wires inside. So all battery bolts are in, they're also torqued. Now let's lift the car and let's put all the water tubes inside and let's try to fill the cooling system with water to see if there are no leaks. Maybe we damaged some, some water hose while putting the battery in or while taking it out. So it's better to, to check it uh, immediately before we assemble everything else. So it's really, really cool that Tesla has these quick connectors for the battery, big wires. And as well, it has these quick connectors for all the coolant hoses, so the assembly is really fast. Just everyone needs to be really aware that these clips, which sits here inside, must be fully inside of the connector. And once you plug them on the male connector, they need to fully like clip in and secure both sides of the tube. Because I can show you the example here, you see it's like fully connected hose but it, I, I'm holding the fixation ring in my pocket now so you can see it looks like fully connected it even looks like like connected but if I pull it a little bit a little bit harder it's going off so this is the important part of the assembly of the cooling pipes
clicks, a red security ring on, and that's it. Rear engine is with power. We can connect also some cooling hoses. Click, click. Then this is connected. Click. This we better connect a bit later once we connect the front engine. With the big wires from the rear engine we are done here. Let's connect the front engine. So this long piece with the front engine wires goes with the bolts through the whole battery to the bottom of the, of the interior and it also holds the wires as well holds the battery a little bit on the middle and it uses this <laughs> Torx Plus bolt and it's pretty heavy I believe this is a good metal to protect the wires and the battery I really like the 3 8 of the inch Torx tools as they are really comfortable to work Now let's go back to the rear to connect the front motor to the battery in the back. And that's it. The front engine has the power, the rear engine has the power. Now only the cooling pipes are left. One thing though could be a little bit improved, so I will show you what is done a little bit wrong. So the factory, the guys are cutting zip ties just anywhere like leaving this sharp edges so by using like the the flat surface um, cutters you can cut them really close to the to the body so you will never damage your fingers or arms which is which is important while working later on the cars while assembling it and cutting it usually people do not damage themselves but later when you like need to take the battery out you're taking all the all the tubes away it it can really hurt your fingers sadly it's everywhere left sharp i had to put the battery bolts after i put this cover so let's remove the bolts let's put this back my memory isn't the best so I already see the difficulties how it will be to assemble whole interior with all the wires and everything. It will be the tougher task than this because here it's just really simple things and inside it will be more difficult. But we'll see somehow it will be driving. So both in front and rear the cooling pipes and the wiring is really mounted pretty well to the battery or to the chassis so it won't um, won't move from vibrations uh, during the, the driving and it, uh, it won't damage the tubes or wires. However in few places like here, I can show you, here like this tube, it, it can, it can touch, touch the chassis sharp edge here while moving because it's already touching so I will I will just simply secure it a little bit better like the Tesla did here with the with the mesh which is uh, basically bulletproof so I will just put it here as well so small improvements can be done but it's not a big issue again it's dripping everywhere this mesh is really bulletproof it's even hard to cut it so here it won't scratch the the plastic tube to the body this should protect it a little bit it doesn't touch but once it's it's moving a little bit it may touch and also because this is also this tube is also moving quite some and this can touch the body on the side skirt i will just use a, a small piece of rubber and one zip tie between them so we can be secured between each other So 
smooth cut. Okay, not so smooth. Now it's smooth. And in this connection is slightly safer. So on the other side is completely same story. So you see the pipe is connected. The mount is on. And here you can see we are touching the, the chassis. So the solution is same as on the other side, some wire mesh. And one more place where one tube touches the other cooling tube. So this will be sorted in the same way as I sorted here with a small rubber and a zip tie between them. So we would stay like this and would move together. The thing is with these cooling uh, pipes uh, and what I'm doing to, to make them safer, uh, in most of the time I believe when the car is driving on nicer roads or in the first five years of the car usage it will never get um, uh, rubbed through the plastic or rubber. However, if the car is uh, driving in more bumpy environment like the racetrack or as well some countries with more bumpy roads, this in some time can, can cause a leakage and when it will need some repairs. On the street it's, it's maybe not so dangerous, but it's still very dangerous for bikers. If there is a leakage of the coolant, it's really, really slippery like ice. And in the track, it can be deadly. So yeah, so I will try to do my best and I offer for the Tesla guys also to check these points. Maybe we know something better than me or we will improve this. So under the car, everything is already connected and uh, now I will fill with distilled water the, the cooling system and yeah, we check if there are no leaks and after that we put the rims on the, the car and we push back to the workshop and start, in, and start installing the, the wiring inside of the car and hopefully in a few days the car will be driving by itself when we want, that is, would drive. So maybe I won't spill too much. I don't even know how much of it fits in the in the system. Why? I see it's too much. And how to bleed the system I also don't know, but we'll find it out while doing it. Okay, so far no leaks. But how to to release the air from it? I really really don't know. And it's kind of hard with Tesla that there are no manuals online or at least I didn't find them. So most of the things we simply find out by ourselves, which is also a bit better that we learn more. Maybe in a longer way, of course. So we filled now just about two and a half liters inside and uh, the tank is full. So I don't know, I will leave it like this until we have some power and when we can power the, the circulating uh, motor on and simply to, to add some water in. So we'll see it later. So I'm already filling the cooling system and while filling, I just saw that I also forgot to put the self-driving computer in and it has the, the water cooling pipes <laughs> here and they are open. Luckily, it's not leaking through there yet, so I need to, to put the computer as quick as possible before the, the air bubble goes away and the water starts going to interior. So car is back on the wheels and it's already in the workshop where the main jobs are being done. And now we have a completely empty interior, as you see, well, with few parts only. And uh, now the goal is to install all the wiring inside, uh, but we won't tighten it uh, fully. We will just drop it in, connect everything, and we will try to drive the car as it is to check what we can eliminate and what we need to leave. So what I will start, I will start from the biggest parts like the charging cables, also some additional parts for the battery mounting uh, in the front, the models uh, on the left and right side. And later we'll go to the smaller bits like the wiring and small bolts and everything. So yeah, because I will show you how many bolts I have and I really don't know which goes where. So there are some bolts here. There are many Tesla parts. I just need to know which bolt goes where. So. Yeah, it's a game, but it will be fine. Wow. 
voltage, which is uh, 400 volts, it's uh, marked orange. So it means where where the orange cable. What? <laughs> I need the tutorial how to assemble it, right? Now at least I know how we must be in this car. Tommy, uh, can you help me with a hand there? Wait, the wrong side. <laughs> it seems that it will fit together with the cage, so it's pretty nice. Perfect, thank you very much. Yeah, so it's always important to find the right tutorials in the YouTube, so you know exactly how the car should be assembled back. It's awesome that the charging cables can fit unmodified in the car with the cage, because they go pretty, pretty high there and the, the cage doesn't interfere with them. And now I can, I can also see why you cannot charge Tesla fast with, uh, with Type 2 charger because it's, uh, it can only be charged fast with CCS connector. And you can see here, this is the bottom of the CCS connector, so it's really thick wires. And at the top it's a <clears throat> Type 2 connector wire, so they are really, really thin. Okay, so some blocks are already in the car mounted, so you can see some antennas on the top, also the battery mounts also charging cables are in actually so far everything fits perfectly like there would be no cage so cage doesn't interfere with anything so far the funny thing i will show you how easy and how fun it, it is to work on the tesla so i was just mounting these um, front side modules and um, yeah so it has many many connectors about 10 i think on one module and there is one on the left and one on the right side and what I wanted to show you I will try to zoom it in so somebody may make fun how I call the front front trunk frunk but it's actually even called on the model like this so it's a useful word so you can see it's a uh, everything is written what's there so it's front door front seat heating system on the top it's frunk, body, body, so yeah it's easy to later on to, to know which wires goes where. And now also we have a bit less of the bolts left and uh, less of the parts and some modules on the car so we know where which connector can go. So now you see still no wiring is in the car and now it's time to bring the wires and put them in. So this is whole Tesla wiring inside of the car. There are a few wires in the front of the car, but it's not so much. So you can see a comparison between the Tesla wires and BMW. And now let's play a game where the wire goes. Okay, so it's pretty easy. So this is driver's side, this is passenger side, and that is under the dashboard. So now just need to put it in. It took just a couple of minutes to, to, to line down the original interior wiring and now I'll put all the wires just into the original mounting points a little bit so I can see the distances and everything and then start to connect them to where we need to connect. So as mentioned before the plan first is to get the car running and later on when we see what we can eliminate or how we can eliminate it then we will put wiring nicely. So I have already connected most of the wires and I will show you a bit. I'm super happy how clean it looks even when the wires are just really dropped in the car. So on the top we have the GPS antennas I think. On the back pillar we have a radio. Most of the modules are already in the car like the right and left big modules. Also airbag module here. Yeah this is for the 
mirror camera wires. So keep in mind, in this wiring, it's uh, all restraint systems and also all the audio systems are still in. So imagine if we will take the all airbag system wires out and also if we take all the audio wires out, basically it will be <laughs> just few wires left, really just few wires. So here we have just a high voltage orange wires, a small charging block for the charging port. Here are the wires for the left uh, uh, electric handbrake, for the ABS sensor and I think for the for the rear bumper. And on the right side we have here for the subwoofer and, um, and uh, also for the rear caliper on the right side. On the top of the trunk we have these um, radio antenna blocks. Also this is for the trunk, like the trunk lights and the trunk lock. On the left side we have just the minus for the window heating and uh, I think it's a minus for the antenna which is also included in the rear window. Once again I will compare it to BMW because you can see one BMW is here standing and one is behind me. Tesla including audio, including airbags and including the car with all the lights front, back and all the equipment. It's even have the rear heated seats, front heated seats, uh, premium audio which is pretty good. It has as much wires as BMW has only for the audio and airbag systems. It's really well done, it's much more organized in this car and it's really easy to, to plug everything in. Most of the things are even written on what, what it means and also like the modules like on the back pillars and everything you even cannot put it in the different positions because it has some small plastic clips and one or two bolts so it makes the assembly really easy and uh, and basically fault free for for the factory workers because simply if it doesn't fit you don't put it there and where it fits it usually fits in the correct position So while I was busy connecting all the wires, Linus was putting the dashboard in and I'm really not sure how he did it because it seems that it will be impossible to take it out. I think he put the dashboard before putting the cage in, even if it's not really possible. As well I have installed the rear bumper already because some wires goes under the bumper under the car. So most of the wiring is already connected back and the car is nearly ready to be started again. The few things as you see in the inside of the car are still missing so the seats and as well we need to bypass the airbag. So this we will show in details in the next video and I can already show you a few things how we simply uh, go with the wiring and some of the bits. So inside of the car you can see like for example the middle console we have destroyed completely and we have took in this foil all the bits of electrical stuff from the middle console and we place here and next to this small X is uh, where the card key should be placed. For example there are the middle uh, lights which are going normally on the roof and as well the hazard button there. So we simply remove all the stuff from the parts and, um, and replace the electrical stuff in this car because the comfort bits we don't need. Of course uh, when the car will be finished it won't look like this. Now we're just placing all the electrical things just, um, just to put in the car to test the car and later we will see what is really needed and what's not, what we can disconnect, what we need to bypass. Yeah once, once we know all the answers when we can um, put the wiring nicely like we do in other cars. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel, don't forget to already book this car and see you very soon in the next video.